class. Um, so you'll still have stuff due, um, but there's no actual like class you need to show up for. Um, that being said, so by the time we get back, uh, the painting of some of the stuff is going to be done. Um, so for anything where it's like the the work in progress prop shots, um, if you guys can like make sure those are like nice pictures of your print quality, since I theoretically won't be able to see that model since it'll be painted over um, by the time it comes to grade things. Holy crap, 59 hours at 0.1 millimeter layer height. And that probably would take an extra day or two because slicer settings or, or slicer estimates are not good. So split processes, very nice for saving time. Um, anywho, but yeah, so please don't show up, but do take good pictures of your models and things are still due at regular time. Um, so that being said, um, again, you're printing your props this week. Um, if you want to start assembling them or like assembling any of your other uh, projects, there are some things you're going to need. Um, and I actually have like a bunch of props that I need to assemble, so I'll probably make some videos on me like actually assembling things. I, I don't know why I wrote this down, but like the process is usually pretty self-explanatory. Um, usually I do recommend like sanding the joints slightly before sticking things together. Um, if something came directly off the build plate, it's usually a little bit smooth. And just like sanding it, not like super aggressively, but enough so there's like a little bit of like scratchy marks in it helps the glue have something better to stick to. And then apart from that, just like gather stuff you need. If you need to like hold your model together, like figure out how you're going to prop it up while it dries before you glue it together. Um, I never do that, and I always regret it. Um, glue your stuff together. And then usually there's some kind of process of like filling the gaps in the seams. Um, because it's very, very rare in my experience, it'll get like a really, really nice seam in your stuff. Um, the first time without any kind of filling that happens. Um, and then basically continue to work. So anywho, um, there's a few different types of, do you guys, are you guys actually like looking at this or do you want to turn the lights on or any preference? Cool. All right, um, I will leave this up then. So there's a mm, few types of glue that I usually use. Um, my preference is CA glue. It's basically cyanoacrylate glue. It's just super glue. Um, you can get this from a few different places. Um, the dollar store is an excellent place to get it. Um, they'll usually, so the dollar store is kind of nice because if you find a decent one, they'll have two different viscosities or thicknesses of glue. They have like a thicker one that's in a little green tube and one that's like pretty much like liquid water you can drip on. Um, they both work pretty much exactly the same. Um, the thicker one sometimes I like because it sometimes like create a little bit of a suction, like hold your prints together a little bit, kind of. Um, or it's good for if you have like a little bit more of a gap that you need to fill, the glue kind of like bridges that so it, the pieces connect together. Um, the runny stuff is kind of good if you have like a little bit of a seam and you can like kind of drip it on and it'll like seep into the crack between your print. So it's kind of nice for that. I like having both on hand just as a personal preference. Um, but you can totally use like just the runny stuff or just the, the thick stuff if you need to. Um, that's basically just standard super glue. You usually get like two little tubes or containers of it for a dollar. Um, they also have, it takes like one to two hours to like dry fully to where I would like feel safe handling it. Um, they also have super glue at like hardware stores like Lowe's um, and at Plaza. If you go and get the stuff at Plaza, they have what's called an accelerator, which you can basically, it's like, it's a zap super glue. If you like go up the stairs, it's on the very left by the window by all the like tools and measuring tapes and tape and stuff. Um, but it's their like zap super glue. It's like $8 a bottle and the accelerator is like $12. Um, but it, and it smells awful. Like if you, like, and I'm not one that's usually affected by like weird chemical-y smells, but like if you put enough of this stuff in a room, like it makes my eyes burn if there's too much of it out at once. <laughs> so please do use ventilation with all of this, but especially with that stuff, because it's horrifying. Um, but they have, so the accelerator is basically like you put your super glue on and then you spritz it with like a little spray bottle of the accelerator and it within like two seconds will cure your super glue. Um, usually I don't use this because a, I'm cheap, so I save it for like when I really need it. Um, it's also kind of like messy and gross, and I always spray it on my hand by accident. Um, but it is really, really good if you have like super thin pieces or things that are hard to hold together for some reason, and you need them to cure instantly. 
So like I recently, like I think I showed you the glass shield I did a while ago, but I just printed a shield that was like 1.2 millimeters thick for pretty much the entire thing. And there was no good way that I could hold it together or like clip it together because it was so thin. So I just kind of went, I like held it in one area, put a like little drop of super glue, accelerated it, uh, and then it was cured. And I had the whole thing, which was like 10 pieces assembled in 20 minutes. Um, it was a little bit weird. I had to like hold pieces of it together with my toes while I like held the pieces and like sprayed with one hand. Um, but it is really good if you're either impatient or again, you have stuff that's like physically hard to, to hold together. Um, so that's basically the CA glue stuff. Um, it sounds like a really dumb con, but like that shield that I just mentioned, I glued my finger to it and it took me a minute, like a solid 60 seconds to get it off. Um, and that's literally just because of the accelerator because I had my finger behind the joint and I didn't realize it and it like cured to my finger. Um, please don't glue yourself to things. <laughs> um, it also, I will say that CA glue is, it's really strong. Um, the accelerator works really fast. And if you glue things in like the wrong position or like I did once, I glued a piece of the model on like backwards, like an idiot. Um, I, I tried, acetone is supposed to dissolve this stuff. I tried it and it didn't work. I had to melt my model apart with a wood burner to get it apart because the stupid glue was so strong. Um, so both a pro and a con. Um, if you're gonna use the accelerator, do again, it dries really, really fast, like almost instantly. Just make sure that your stuff is like positioned where you want it when you spray the stuff. Um, so that's the igloo. Again, I don't really care what you use or where you get it. It usually, for smaller projects, like a dagger that's like a few pieces, um, it usually takes me like, like half to one tube of dollar store glue and you get like two to a pack. Um, the plaza stuff lasts, lasts for a while, but it's, it is pricier up front. Um, there's also E6000. Honestly, I'd probably just use super glue, but there's E6000 if you have it. Um, this is available at most like craft stores. You could find it at the AC Moore. I'm sure plaza has it. I've never looked for it there. Um, it dries pretty strong. It dries pretty much glass clear. Like if you ever are looking for something to like put on glass and have it be clear, E6000 is great. Um, the super glue dries like a little bit cloudy on the outside usually. Um, the uh, cons, it doesn't sand quite as well. It has the weird tendency to sort of, uh, I don't know how to, it like gums up in your sandpaper. I think it like heats up and then it gets like really tacky. Uh, and it's just like a little awkward. You get like pills of glue to sort of on your print, which is a little bit weird. Um, but it is also reasonably strong. It also does take at least a full 24 hours to dry fully, which is kind of annoying. Um, but I still use it sometimes, especially if I'm doing like giant prints where I maybe don't want to use like all of my super glue on that one print. Um, there's also hot glue. I don't recommend this for permanently gluing your prints together, but it is very, very good if you just need to like temporarily hold things in place. Um, I have been known, like if I'm painting a print and I just sort of like want to not be able to handle it, I've like, well, hot glue a stick into it. So I can just like turn the stick around and like handle the mask that way. And then when I'm done, I just like peel the hot glue out. Um, if you use it on a super like high temperature, you could potentially warp your print. Um, but like low melt hot glue is really, really great for like temporarily either holding stuff together or gluing things onto your print to make it easier to handle. Um, there's also a bunch of different other types of glue, but this is usually what I use and probably the easiest to source. Um, anybody have questions on glue? <laughs> cool. Um, all right, uh, and then I was asked about ways to smooth the prints. Um, so actually, let me, okay, cool. All right, I'll skip back to that in a second. So normally once you glue the prints, um, there's probably gonna be like little gaps in your print that you're gonna need to fill or else it's gonna look like a really obvious gap. Um, that shield I just mentioned, there was some peeling at the quarters and I have quarter inch holes in the middle of my shield, which I need to patch. Um, so for stuff like that, or again, just like small little seam lines you want to get rid of. Um, you're going to want to use probably some kind of either wood filler. Um, I usually use Durham's Rock Putty. It's absurdly cheap. Um, the packaging is frankly ridiculous. I'm going to close all of these programs before my computer explodes. Great. 
it's not usually this laggy. All right, yes, so this is, this is the packaging for Durham's Rock Putty. <laughs> really weird. Um, but you can get a little can of this. Um, I think the four pound version is like $8 at most hardware stores. You can get like a much smaller, reasonably sized can for like $2.50. Um, and this is what I use like most of the time for patching prints. I really like it. Again, it's cheap and I'm a fan of cheap. Um, but you can also mix it to whatever consistency you like. Um, so if you're just looking for, if you need to like patch a huge hole, you can mix it to a more like pasty consistency and sort of like smear it on like icing. Um, you can also, if you're just looking for like a very light coating of the stuff, mix it down so it's pretty watery and like paint it on with a paintbrush. Um, it has the delightful, uh, delightful property of being water soluble, so you can actually just wash the paintbrush when you're done. And I've never had it affect a paintbrush at all, which is really nice. Um, it's also pretty easy to sand. It dries fairly quickly. Um, and the working times are reasonable. I like stuff with a little bit longer working times, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. Um, stuff like this Bondo dries in like four minutes. And to me, that's just hard to work with. Um, but it, I do use it sometimes. Um, downside to this, and I don't have this problem very often, but every once in a while, it will randomly flake off my print. And I can't figure out why. Honestly, I would imagine, like most times that happens, I feel like with supplies in general, it's because I'm not paying attention to whether it's fully dry. So I might be you know, putting on layers too thick and the bottom isn't quite dry. And by the time that dries, it cracks the outside after I've like put eight layers of paint on it. Um, but like sometimes that happens. So to be safe, I would give this uh, you know, ample time to dry before trying to like coat it with other paint or like more layers of Durham's, et cetera. Um, so that's Durham's. Um, also would be good, this is the kind of thing where like, uh, good to split with people because like even the $2 can of Durham's is probably gonna be like more than a lot of you guys need for the class. So you guys could kind of like go in as a group and buy like $1.50 worth of Durham's and just like share the, share the can. Um, so there's that. There's also, again, this Bondo Spot Putty. It's like Spot Putty 409. Um, it's pretty cheap on Amazon. You can also find it in auto body stores. Um, it is like an auto body repair item. So you're probably not gonna find, I've looked for it in like Lowe's and I haven't been able to find it. Um, but again, cheapest I've found it on Amazon, so you can just order it if you needed it. Um, also has a short working time, easily sandable. Smelly as all get out. Bondo products in general, um, work with them in an extremely ventilated area and ideally with some kind of respirator because they are like extremely fumy uh, as far as these wood putties go, um, probably more so than anything else. Um, so again, at a minimum, very, very ventilated area. Ideally wear some kind of like filtering face mask thing with them. Um, so for simplicity's sake, it might be easier to, to do the Durham's. Um, it just comes in like a little powder and you mix in water and it's like pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, if you, I've, it, as far as I can tell, this isn't particularly harmful in like any way, shape or form, unless you like suck the dust into your lungs, um, which I don't recommend for anything. So like this is, pretty inert. This stuff is like, again, a little bit more harmful. You want to wear gloves and stuff when you're working with it, um, et cetera. So that's usually how I patch holes um, right after I've glued the piece together. Um, there's also like a bunch of other different types of wood putty. If you go online, there's like other people suggesting different stuff. This is just what I've worked with personally and had fairly decent luck with. Um, any questions on that? Cool. Um, all right. So then we get to ways to smooth a print. Um, for I've actually brought, oh, I left it in the printing room because I'm a dingus. All right, um, I brought a prop, which I'll go find later. Um, so the other, so I recommend that you get at some point sandpaper. Um, the grit isn't terribly important. I usually get one rougher grit. So lower, lower numbers are more abrasive, rougher sandpaper. Um, so I usually just get like 120 grit. I found like weird rolls of it on Amazon. It's like adhesive tape, I think usually marketed for skateboards. I just like the shape that it's in. So I got like a giant roll for like $16. Um, another good thing to split. Is that questions anyone? Or just, okay, cool. Um, so again, I usually do like 120 grit and then just sort of pick an arbitrary finer grit if I need to get rid of paper um, or if I need to get rid of like obvious scratch marks. Um, 
it, it doesn't really matter that much what type of sandpaper you get. Um, you could also go with getting like a multi-pack of sandpaper. It was like a mixed variety of grits if you wanted. I just find for me personally, I usually use really, really aggressive grits way faster than the finer ones. So I just buy giant rolls of, of harsher grit sandpaper. Um, so the fun thing is that PLA doesn't sand terribly well. Um, it'll take forever to sand your stuff down if you just want to get like a smooth finish with sanding alone. Um, so I usually recommend gluing the stuff together, put like a little blob to fill in your seams of like filler primer, uh, sand that down so it's on the level with the rest of your print. And then what I'll go is do, usually I'll do a layer of filler primer. Um, so this is just like rattle can. I know some of you guys have worked with it already. Um, you can get pick it up at Lowe's or auto body stores for around seven dollars a can. If it's the like four dollar stuff, honestly, sometimes it works. But like the the seven dollar can is like better for filling in cracks. Um, so what you would normally do is get your thing to like a reasonable. It's not like a magic substance that's going to automatically make your stuff smooth. So like sand off any like major imperfections or like patch any major holes. Um, spray a can of the filler or spray a layer of filler primer on. Let it dry. And then you can sand it down a little bit, and it sands way easier than the PLA. So once you sort of, again, spray your whole model, sand it down, it's going to slowly wear away and like fill in those layer lines. Um, so by the time you do maybe like the two to four coats of the stuff, it should be fairly smooth on the outside of your model. Um, and again, you want to look for something that's like sandable filler primer. Like it will say sandable filler primer. Um, usually very largely and obnoxiously on the outside. So like, I actually have been looking into getting bulk packs of this for myself because I go through it like really fast. Um, but this is usually like what you want. Again, just to tan will fill a primer. Um, so if you guys are getting this from like a Lowe's or Home Depot, you're probably going to find this Rust-Oleum brand. Um, there's also the uh, Duplicolor sandable filler primer, um, which Personally, I've not noticed a huge difference. A lot of people seem to like the Duplicolor better. It's pretty much the same price, um, but you have to usually go to an auto body store to get that. So somewhere like a Pet Boys um, is where you would pick up the Duplicolor stuff. Don't know why some of this stuff is like only auto body places, but yeah. Um, honestly though, I would say just get whatever you can find if you are looking for filler primer. Um, but yeah. What? Um, but yeah, so this is about $7 a can. I do run through it pretty fast. So if I'm doing like a large prop, maybe something like this big, um, that could run me, that could use up like for me by the time I do a few coats, most of a can of filler primer. Um, so it does, it can add up in cost if it, if you end up spraying like a lot of coats onto your print. Um, but it's just a spray paint. Oh, okay. That's what I meant by this. Yes. So note about spray paints in general. I don't know where you like should be using this stuff. Um, I do know that somewhere on the second floor on the other side, there is a uh, spray booth for doing such applications of spray paint. Um, last time I talked to Eric about it, he was like, I don't really know if you guys can use that. Um, I can ask him again, but like you could just go in. It's basically like a giant vent where you could like spray into it and it like sucks all the fumes away so it doesn't like fume up the room. Don't spray paint inside, for the love of God. I've done it, don't do it. Um, you could also, and I've done this once or twice at Drexel, maybe find a park and out of courtesy put a tarp down and just sort of spray your stuff outside and then take it in a little bit later. Um, just, I don't know. If you do that, be nice and don't spray the grass. Like get like a cheap tablecloth and like throw it down or like put cardboard down or something so you don't have like a giant gold ring in the shape of a gun or whatever on the grass. Um, because don't do that. Um, that's filler primer. Um, the other option that you have for doing more like hardcore smoothing is epoxy. Um, or for this class, just use XTC 3D. Um, it's just like a brand of epoxy. Um, so you can actually find this. You can find this on Amazon. Um, you can find this actually in Plaza usually, unless it's sold out, which is honestly fairly rare. Um, this is uh, what the packaging looks like. So it's basically a, excuse me, um, you mix two parts of part A and two, uh, one part of one B. What am I saying? Sorry. 
two parts A, one part B. Mix them together uh, very well, and then apply to your surfaces. Um, and I actually have, does anybody want to, is the, is the print room open right now? Does anybody know? Like unlocked? Cool. Um, does anybody want to run over really quick and grab the bow that's just like sitting in there? Piece of bow? Um, thank you. Because I just, I brought a, a thing that I coated with epoxy. Um, and it's, because it's kind of weird to work with. It's like really awesome for some things. Thank you. Uh, and really, really bad for others. So if you have something with like super fine detail on it, for the love of God, don't use epoxy on it. It will obliterate all of your details. That would be something where you'd want to use filler primer. Epoxy is really good if you need to smooth like really large surfaces um, without a whole lot of detail on it. Um, and it's a little bit goes a long way. And when I say that, like I use, when I say like one part A, or like two parts A and one part B, thank you. Um, I use like plastic spoons as my measuring container, and that will usually cover like an entire print. Um, cool. Oh, you can actually just pass it around. So I have this like weird bow, and this is something that I covered with epoxy. Um, and this is a few layers of epoxy. Um, so in this case, it kind of worked well. I'll turn the lights on like a little bit uh, if I can figure out how. Okay, cool. Um, so for that particular model, um, the details in the handle are like pretty thick. So I didn't really need to worry too much about the epoxy like covering them over entirely. Um, but you'll notice in the sort of grip in the handle, it has sort of started to fill in some of the, the seams in that. Um, so again, just like use epoxy with caution. I've heard you can uh, smooth it, thin it down with like rubbing alcohol. I've just never tried it personally. Um, but it is kind of nice for certain things. So if you ever are working on like really, really thin prints, like that 1.2 millimeter thick shield, um, I'm gonna coat that with epoxy and it does actually lend a pretty significant amount of strength to your piece, um, which filler primer doesn't really do at all. Um, and you can, if you're so inclined, tint it to be a color. So in this case, I, it's just, the epoxy is clear by default. I added some black cheap craft acrylic paint to it and that helped uh, to tint it black. It sort of helped me to see what I was doing, but also if I scratch the paint, it's gonna, you're gonna see the black underneath instead of the horrible green filament that I printed that in. Um, downsides to epoxy, apart from potentially obliterating detail, uh, you need extra stuff for it, more so than pretty much anything else I've recommended so far, except maybe the Bondo. Um, so if you do this, uh, you're gonna need gloves, because getting this stuff on your hands is a colossal pain. Um, it's also like, I haven't found this to be particularly fumey, um, but still use good ventilation, but it is really, really hard to like get off your hands. Um, you will need sacrificial brushes. So a lot of people use like little foam, awful foam brushes. Um, some people use like chip brushes, like those just like really cheap throwaway brushes um, that you can paint with. Um, you also need something to mix this with, something to put it on, uh, like something to spread it out with. Um, so you just, you, you need more stuff when you're working with, with epoxy. And again, I have something I need to epoxy, so I'll just like make a video about me actually doing that. Um, if you guys wanna see kind of like what my process is at least for, for applying that to a print. Um, just be aware, if you do use epoxy, so like a $30 thing of epoxy will probably last you most of the class. Um, or you can, again, share it with your friends and sort of buy more as needed. Um, but it is more of like an upfront investment than some of the other stuff. Um, just do be aware that uh, when this is curing, it is a exothermic chemical reaction, so it does put off heat. Um, more so when you're curing like large blobs of the stuff at once. So unless you like epoxy and melted plastic all over your table, do not mix this in a like red solo cup and leave it in that cup. It will melt it and get epoxy everywhere. <laughs> um, so when you use this, like mix it in some kind, well actually I usually just mix mine flat, but if you're gonna mix it in a cup, dump it out onto something like wax paper or tin foil or a paper plate or something where it can spread out thin because that helps to not, it, it, it sort of dissipates the heat and it doesn't get as hot when you do that. Um, so again, just be aware that if you leave it like in a container, it will totally melt through your container. Um, it also, 
pretty much destroys any brush you use. Like once that epoxy cures, it's just then a chunk of resin on a stick. Um, so don't use your nice like $30 brushes to mix epoxy or like to paint epoxy on. Um, I did find a weird hack, which honestly, it was like really annoying. Um, but you can reuse your brushes with epoxy if you get just like regular distilled white vinegar um, and you wash your brush in vinegar once you're done with the epoxy. So epoxy your stuff, um, and you should be doing this with gloves on your hands, again, so you don't get epoxy all over yourself. Um, it's not great to get on your skin, it's also just annoying. Um, and then I usually sort of like fill my palm with epoxy, or dear God, no, uh, fill your hand with vinegar and then just like rub the brush in it aggressively and do that a few times. So you're just like rinsing it in vinegar basically and then I'll go in with like dish soap and do some more iterations. It's a huge pain and it takes a while, but it will save your brushes if you don't want to keep buying new brushes. Um, it's, and you can re, like I've reused a brush, the bristles fell apart before the brush was destroyed. Like the bristles on it are like an eighth of an inch thick because I just wore them down so much. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of epoxy. Um, if any of you guys, uh, you can actually go on like eBay if you guys need like bulk brushes. Um, and again, this would be like if a few of you guys want to use epoxy and you don't want to, you know, spend a bunch of money on brushes, easily the ch uh, cheapest like chip brushes you're going to find are these ones from eBay. You can also get those old foam brushes. This is like 40 of them for $15. Um, split that again between two people and it becomes a little bit more manageable. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much epoxy. Does anybody have any questions on that? Cool. Um, so that's, again, usually how most people will smooth their prints. The other option is just not smoothing it at all, um, which I don't necessarily recommend doing. Um, for some things, I've been known to do that. Um, I have found, so if you guys use um, like either the Sturm's Rock Putty or the Bondo Spot Putty, uh, and then you put that on in certain areas and just leave exposed print lines on others, um, when you paint that, these absorb paint differently and look different than the plastic than the paint on the plastic so it ends up looking really weird so i usually hit it with at least a coat of filler primer um just so they paint sort of goes on evenly it's really really hard to describe but like it's a it, it like this can just be a very noticeable seam if you paint directly onto this um so normally what happens is you'll end up doing like glue your stuff together patch the holes filler primer be like wow there's actually a lot of bumps that I didn't notice before in just like the filament. So you'll like sand it down again and it, like maybe fill in some little gaps you missed and then fill a primer it again and then sand it as needed. So this is like usually you kind of go through a few different iterations of this um, before, you're, before you're done. Um, apart from that, um, other tool that I've just sort of found to be useful and you can totally get along without this um, is some kind of like little Dremel or just like hand tool with like filing bits. Uh, so they do have these also in the hybrid lab downstairs. If you look in that uh, cabinet thing, um, they have those there. Uh, and I, I checked, they should have like some tips that would work pretty well for, for doing prints. Um, I'll do a little bit more in-depth video on it when I'm dremeling the crap out of everything in the next few days. Um, but they're nice for getting in for like small details where it's like hard to get a little sandpaper manually. Um, it's also just way faster. So like if you have like a really, really aggressive blob of plastic around your seam, just Dremel that. Don't try to hand sand it off. Just take a Dremel and be like, ha ah. um, Just be aware, some of the bits do tend to fling. These will also, again, heat up your model, um, potentially melt the plastic. Um, wear eye, eye protection if you're going to use these, because uh, some of the tips will absolutely fling large chunks of plastic into your eyeballs. Um, I found some plastic chips in my eyelashes the other day when I was doing this. Um, so again, eye protection. Um, and also be aware that these can very, very easily uh, sort of lodge themselves in one part of your print and like punch through all the holes in your, or punch through all the walls in your print. Um, a combination of just, they sand way faster and like the heat generated. Um, so it's usually good to like kind of keep moving and like keep your, keep your tools moving. Um, that's basically everything that I have on like sanding prints and just sort of like finishing it, prepping it for painting. Does anybody have any questions on that? Cool. Um, apart from that, so again, you guys will also have, oh, okay, sorry. Things I definitely recommend. Um, you'll probably need sandpaper. If you can get away without it, I'll be really surprised. 
um, some kind of spot putty, so again, like the Durham's or the Bondo, and then epoxy or filler primer as needed. Um, and this is like the, again, I'm not requiring you to like, everyone must go out and get seven cans of filler primer and like a thing of epoxy, like grab whatever you think makes sense for your project, um, for your future projects, etc. cetera. Um, I don't wanna force people to get stuff that they're gonna never use or like have extra of later. Um, so yeah, so after that, um, I think when we come back week five, the prop painting should be due. Um, so just like some weird notes on painting. So again, a lot of times if you just need a solid color, spray paint works totally fine. Uh, if you're going somewhere in the city to buy spray paint, uh, do bring ID. Uh, they usually will card you for buying spray paint uh, within the city's bounds, um, which is really weird and I still get carded, but whatever. Um, again, you just need to find somewhere to, uh, to spray it and just double to every once in a while, people have issues with um, different types of spray paint reacting uh, with other types of spray paint. It'll like crack or flake off. Um, so just make sure it's like the same type of spray paint usually is what I do. So don't use like some kind of spray enamel with regular spray paint, like that'll mess stuff up. Um, usually what I do is I'll stick to like these sort of uh, Krylon fusion paints. Um, they say fusion in like giant letters across it, but these are actually designed to stick to plastic. Um, regular spray paint also works. Um, you can also use like super cheap acrylics. Um, oh wait, sorry, so spray paint. Um, you can actually get spray paint at Plaza. It's probably like eight times more expensive than it should be. Um, I would usually get spray paint at Lowe's and they have one on like 69th Street and one in South Philly, both of which there are public transit uh, options available to get you there. Um, there's a bus line that'll actually drop you off like pretty much right next to the, the West Philly Lowe's um, if you need that. Um, apart from that, there's cheap acrylics, and this is, I'm not gonna lie, mostly what I use for things because I'm cheap. Um, so this would be something, I think Plaza is like the one place you can't get cheap acrylic craft paint. They have like very expensive acrylic craft paint. Um, so if you need like a lot of colors really cheap, like 54 cents a bottle cheap, um, hit up the AC Moore on 15th Street. Um, again, it's like a block and a half off of the, the L. Um, and you can get like metallic paints there, S whole assortment of random colors, like more so than you can get with spray paint usually. Um, and you can be as cheap or as expensive as you want. I think the most expensive bottle of acrylic craft paint I've ever bought was like $3. Um, so good if you need like a lot of small quantities of varied colors. Um, if, you're, if you're looking for like maximum coverage, I've found that Ceramicote is a good brand. Um, some of the really, really cheap craft paints that are like 54 cents, the Nicole's brand, take a few layers to get a solid color built up, which nice for some effects, really annoying if you want solid coverage sometimes and you have to do like seven coats of paint to make a color. Um, otherwise you can just use, that's like usually what I use. Um, if you guys have like all of those fancy acrylic paints from your like design classes or whatever, and you're like, I hate these, I wanna use them, um, feel free to paint your prints with them. It's probably hardcore overkill in terms of cost, but if you have them and are never gonna use them, it's a good way to burn through them. Um, you might need to thin them down because I think they you might usually require you get like the heavy body stuff, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much paint. Um, and then usually at some point when you're done with the paint job, you will do some kind of clear coat for strength. On occasion, I've been, noted, uh, I've been known to actually coat it in a clear coat of epoxy if I want something like crazy shiny. Um, usually I'll just do a random coat of spray paint, some type of clear spray paint. Um, this Rust-Oleum 2X stuff usually works pretty well. Um, um, I find it, it, for most of the spray paints I use, it does a pretty good job like not reacting with the, the plastics. Um, if you use this sort of 2X gloss coat or whatever, that's a tiny picture, uh, with any of the other 2X stuff, you'll pretty much guarantee that your paint isn't gonna explode and like have weird reactions with itself. Um, but the clear coats do work really nicely. Um, you can also, other weird tidbit, gloss paint is apparently stronger than matte paint. Um, functionally, I've never had an issue just doing a coat of matte clear, but sometimes if you're looking for like maximum adhesion or strength or something in your clear coats, I've heard that it's better to do a gloss coat and then do a matte coat uh, just for the finish of the matte. But again, never personally had an issue with that. Um, apart from that, I'll do a video on some techniques about like washes and dry brushes and masking and all of that stuff. 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the paint stuff. Um, anyone have any questions on that? <laughs>